the flying season is quite brief in Norway, from mid-May till the end of August at best. Even though I flew to Norway in mid-July, the weather was quite difficult most of the time. Strong, turbulent winds, low clouds, low visibility, frequent rain. I was happy I was alone. At least I did not have to apologize to anyone, nor had I to keep promising that the weather would get better soon. I only had sunshine on the trip for one and a half day at the end of the journey. The fact that the capital of Bornholm Island, the little town of Rone, got bombed out only on the 8th of May 1945 by the Red Army surprised me. It was, however, a result of the fact that the German commander-in-chief wanted to give himself and his unit up only to the Americans. Unfortunately, he didn't find any American soldier anywhere nearby and the Red Army commander lost his patience. From Bornholm, I continued to the south of Sweden. The trip over the sea took about 45 minutes. In case of an emergency landing on the water, I would not have had much chance to survive given the low temperature of the sea. I therefore climbed to 7,500 feet above the sea at least to be able to glide a longer distance. At the same time, I was permanently trekking down ships on the sea in order to land nearby if needed. When the Swedish islands came out from the mist, I was quite relieved. After about three more hours of flight, I landed at Skavsta Airport south of Stockholm. The meteo forecast for the journey to the north was not much optimistic. Visibility below limits and low cloud base. So I could only leave for the next leg of the journey at about 4 o'clock in the afternoon. I managed to fly through the busy airspace between the airports of Broma and Arlanda and continued up north to a little town of Zundval. There I landed at 7 in the evening, but the sun was still high. Dark only came before midnight and the sunlight returned already before 3 in the morning. I left Zundval for Kiruna at around 9 in the morning. Kiruna got stuck in my brain since my school years as a town of enormous iron ore mines so I finally had the chance to see it. About half an hour before landing at Kiruna I crossed the polar circle. Kiruna was rainy and misty throughout the night and I could only judge that it was night by looking at my watch. Here the sunlight was on during the whole night. The rain got lighter in the morning, so I went to the airport, filed my flight plan, attached the camera to the holder on the back of the aircraft, went through the checklist, got the engine started and advised the tower that I was leaving for Narvik in Norway. The only choice left to me was to follow the road and railway between Kiruna and Narvik, trusting that they lead through a valley which is lower than the clouds and that they do not end up in a mountain tunnel. The space available to me was gradually getting thinner. The terrain was rising as the mountains approached and the cloud base remained at the same altitude. After about 90 minutes I made it to Narvik, the northernmost point of my journey. There is unfortunately no video and only very few photos from the Kiruna Narvik flight. The outside video camera failed to memorize anything and the photos from the handheld photo camera suffered from the turbulence so badly that only very few are sharp enough to be shown. From Narvik my journey continued to the south.
clouds were permanently low, so I had to fly over the coastal areas. I could only imagine the mountains on the left because they were covered in mist and clouds. I flew only at about 1000 feet above the sea level, so I had to follow the shoreline very closely. I could not fly far out over the cold sea waters at such low altitude. The low clouds over the Bordeaux airport made my landing somewhat exciting. Two hours into the next flight I learned that the airport on my flight plan was only opening at 8 in the evening. Beautiful blue sky showed early in the morning the next day so I decided to get into my airplane and fly back a bit to find the Svarstinen glacier. The flight was breathtaking. Blue fjords, blue sky, white glacier. When I turned around to continue to the south, there was a heavy dark barrier of clouds blocking the journey. So I had to quickly land back at Stoka airport to avoid the rain, wind and storm. I spent all the day at the control tower as the visibility was below minima. At half past six in the evening I decided the weather was fine enough for me to fly south to Trondheim. I was zigzagging between rain showers and clouds, communicating with the airports on the way and then I got the news. Trondheim airport closed because of bad weather and I was recommended to fly to Namsos airport instead. Namsos is some 30 kilometers inland. To reach it below the clouds I had to fly through a meandering fjord where the clouds were even lower than on the shore. I got back into the Game Boy flying routine and did my best to avoid the rocks on the sides and power lines across the fjord. I got a little bit stressed out about it all so it was a beautiful sight 
when I noticed the sharp lights of the runway at the end of the fjord. The weather got finally wonderful and I stayed overnight at Zogendal in order to have enough time to fly around all the beautiful sights in the area. A bit of turbulence was visible on the video shots, but other than that the weather was great. The camera fortunately did not fail this time, so you can share the joy with me. I kept flying around the glaciers, fjords and waterfalls until Saturday noon.
the afternoon I flew to Xi'an in the south and refueled there for the last time on this trip. Then I set off for my return, passing by Oslo and Copenhagen on the journey. At 7 in the evening I was back to Prague.